Welcome to A View from the Summit with Blake Higginbotham. Stay tuned for current revelatory teaching and solid foundational training that will help you discover the purpose for which you were born. Thank you for tuning in, and remember to share this broadcast with your friends and family. Hello, my name is Blake Higginbotham with Apostolic Kingdom Alliance. Welcome to A View from the Summit. I want to share a message with you today that uh, actually Holy Spirit dealt with me out of just one statement, one part of a passage, and it really became a message that I believe will be something that all of us will benefit from. And I'm going to share my screen with you today. We're going to go ahead and get started. The title of this message is So That You May Be Sons. So that you may be sons. You heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons. So that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. That particular segment of this particular passage just leapt off of the page to me. And uh, I began to really do a deep probe into this passage of Scripture to see what the Father was saying to us by His Spirit, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven, for He causes His Son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you so if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? That almost sounds like a song, doesn't it? <laughs> if, 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 you, if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do, do not even the Gentiles do the same? Therefore, you are to be perfect as your father is perfect. That's found in Matthew 5, verses 43 through 48 in the Legacy Standard Bible. Now listen to my thoughts concerning this particular passage of Scripture. In order to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us, we have to know and understand the love, grace, and mercy of Yahweh. It's, 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 other than that, it would be impossible. Other than that, it would be against nature. Other than that, uh, our soul just could not deal with that that reality. But so that you may be, so that you may be as your listen, so you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. You're going to learn how to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And if you ever, <laughs> and if you hadn't got here yet, uh, you know. Uh, don't beat yourself up because it took me some time to get to the place where I could actually love my enemies. And I have a better understanding today of loving my enemies than I did when I started. Um, I really only have one enemy. There may be somebody, you know, on planet earth that considers me their enemy, but I don't consider them my enemy. And I don't consider anybody, any human being, my enemy. So it's really easy to love my enemies because uh, I don't consider them to be enemies. Now, they may be under the influence of the one who is my enemy. They may be, uh, they may be operating in a lack of understanding concerning uh, the love, the grace, and the mercy of Yahweh. But that doesn't give me an excuse uh, to hate my enemy are to retaliate against those who persecute me. So if you have a better understanding of the love, grace, and mercy of Yahweh, you will be able to love your enemy. And you will be able to pray for those who persecute you. Not just pray that you will, uh, you know, that you won't go through anything very difficult because they're persecuting you, but pray for the actual persecutor and ask Yahweh to deal with their hearts, ask, ask the Lord to allow truth to um, be revealed to them. And uh, that's what we've got to learn to do. 
Loving your enemies is not natural, nor is it based on a religious moral code of ethics. The truth is most people only love those who love them and pray for those who can benefit uh, them in some way. Did you, are you with me so far? Most people only love those who love them and pray for those who can benefit them in some way. Now, you know, I'm telling you the truth. This passage also suggests that there is nothing to gain from only loving and blessing those who love and bless us. For even the worst of us is capable of that. If a tax collector, which we consider to be pretty bad, or a lawyer, we consider to be pretty bad, or, or a convict, we might consider them to be pretty bad. If they're capable of that, if they're capable of uh, loving and blessing and loving and uh, and in some ways forgiving those that love them and forgive them, certainly we can do better than the worst. <laughs> Amen. If we are if we are to represent our heavenly Father as sons, referring back up to the first verse in Matthew five, we need to receive the full embrace of the Father's love and forgiveness and pay it forward in the way we love and forgive others. Wow. Man, I can truthfully say that is not always easy. I'd be lying to you if I said I'm perfected in it. I'd be lying to you if I said that uh, uh, I have not had any ill feelings towards someone. But but let me tell you, uh, love is not offended. So therefore, we've got to get to the place. We've got to grow to the place in our understanding that we will not, we are unoffendable. We may become disappointed with someone, but we are unoffendable. We're not going to stumble over something that somebody says or does uh, toward us. We're going to, even if we know that somebody sees us as their enemy, we're not going to allow them in our hearts to become an enemy. And we are not going to give uh, the defeated one credit for in some way influencing them against us. We are not going to curse them we are going to bless them. The scripture says, here's another one. Here, here's another one. That's not always easy because there's times when uh, I want to lower the boom on people with my mouth. I, I don't know if, I, if, if that's an issue maybe with you. I don't know. But let me say this. There's times when I, if I'm being candid, there's times when I'm not thinking very nice thoughts about them. But the scripture says, bless and curse not. Doesn't say, it also says, don't repay. Uh, evil with evil, but repay evil with good. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Well, sometimes I just feel like that uh, we ought to be able to invoke the power of God and uh, call down lightning from heaven and just deal with the issue right there on the spot and just be done with it. And poof, they turn into a little vapor of smoke and it's over with. But that's just not the way it is. But if you'll keep your heart right and you'll love and you'll walk in grace and you'll show mercy, and you'll pray, and you'll bless people. Are you listening to me? I guarantee you this, Yahweh will deal with it. Well, say amen, Brother Black. That's good preaching. Now go ahead. Being holy as or like, I would like to say, probably is a better meaning and, and better understanding of this. Being holy as or like he is holy will become our life in him with one another. I don't know that we will ever in our lifetime uh, in natural flesh, uh, in carnal mind, I don't <laughs> carnal man rather, I don't know that we'll ever be as holy as he is, but we certainly can be holy like he's holy by representing the character of Yahweh in the way we live, move, and have our being. Now listen to this. If doing unto others as you would have them do unto you is known as the golden rule, then the Beatitudes speak of the holy character of Yahweh. Now let's go over that in just a second. All right. What happiness comes to you when you feel your spiritual poverty? 
what happiness comes to you when you feel your spiritual poverty. For yours is the realm of heaven's kingdom. What delight comes to you when you wait upon the Lord? For you will find you will find what you long what you long for. What blessing comes to you when gentleness lives in you? For you will inherit the earth. How enriched you are when you crave righteousness for you will be satisfied. How blessed are you when you demonstrate tender mercy, for tender mercy will be demonstrated to you. Wow. What bliss you experience when your heart is pure, for then your eyes will open to see more and more of God. How joyful you are when you when you make peace. Isn't that the truth? You know, it's one thing to get into an argument or or even a, a, you know, a heated discussion and then make peace. There's just something about it. How joyful you are when you make peace. For then you will be recognized as a true child of God. How enriched you are when persecuted for doing what is right. For then... You experience the realm of heaven's kingdom. How blessed are you when people insult and persecute you and speak all kinds of cruel lies about you because you love me. So leap for joy, since your heavenly father, your heavenly reward is great. For you are being rejected the same way the prophets were before you. That's found in Matthew chapter 5, same chapter, but before the passage that I read before in verse 3 through 12 in the TPT translation. Being sons of, of our Father who is in heaven results in being and doing differently than the world. <laughs> it, will we ever be able to get this one? As it pertains to the way we run our mouth, the way we treat people, the way we act, in life, the you know, listen, uh, I can say this, I can say this that that there, there's a lot to learning better social behavior. There's a lot to learning how to listen to people. There's a lot to learning about really caring for people that has to be learned. Being sons of our Father who in, who is in heaven results in being and doing differently than the world. What if I told you that Yahweh hadn't called you to be a disruptor? He hadn't called you uh, to basically critique everything, make everything right, straighten everybody out. Listen, the world does that. The universe does that. Circumstances and situations do that. Life is hard for a lot of people, and then they die. For me, life it it may have been hard over the years, but I rejoice every day that I have on this earth. When I wake up in the morning, I'm uh, looking for an opportunity to communicate with my father via Holy Spirit. And I always ask him, what are we doing today? What are we doing today? If he If he doesn't answer me, then I just go ahead and get me a cup of coffee and sit down and wait a little bit longer. And I like to be real quiet in the morning for about 20 minutes and try to disengage my thinking and my planning and, oh, hallelujah, my great uh, ability to, uh, you know, to figure things out. I want to repeat that again. Being sons of our Father who is in heaven results in being and doing differently than the world. Now listen to this passage of Scripture found in the same chapter of the book of Matthew, different, uh, different section. Your lives are like salt among the people. But if you like salt become bland, how can your saltiness be restored? Flavorless salt is good for nothing and will be thrown out and trampled on by others. Your light, listen, your lives light up the world. 
your lives light up the world for how can you hide a city that stands on a hilltop and who would light a lamp and then hide it under an obscure place. Instead, it's placed where everyone in the house can benefit from its light. So don't hide your light. Let it shine brightly before others so that your commendable works will shine as light upon them. And then they will give their praise to your Father in heaven. That's Matthew 5, verses 13 through 16 in the TPT translation of the Bible. The, the Beatitudes describe the blessedness of those who have certain qualities or experiences particular to those belonging to the kingdom of heaven. So I want you to reread all of Matthew 5 with this in mind. It's all about becoming those who may be sons of the Father who is in heaven. And there is nothing greater than sonship. And there's certainly nothing greater than representing the Father by referral. And so we need to consider these passages of Scripture over and over again until we're able to understand the difference between loving the way the world loves, the way religion loves, the way just ordinary people love and the way sons love and the way sons live and the way sons, the way sons forgive and let it affect our lives. Let it change our world because we're, we are the light of the world. I bless you today in Yahshua's name until next time. Thank you for watching a view from the summit. We pray that you were encouraged, blessed, and challenged by today's message. All of Blake's music and books can be found and purchased at www.musicbyblh.me. That's www.musicbyblh.me or www.booksbyblh.me. That's www.booksbyblh.me. For more information about Apostolic Kingdom Alliance, go to www.apostoliccingdomalliance.com.